what is up you guys and of course welcome to our first week battle in the Mount Moon Battle Association and uh, I am of course yours truly the Skyrender and we are facing our week one actually another Swedish player which are Kaloskar and um, I'm gonna say it like this it it's really nice to have somebody in your own time zone for at least first week battle and I was really scared uh, Carlos' team is really really nice now he decided to bring the team that I was thinking would bring, though I didn't see him, or I did see him bring all the mole of this match, which he didn't do. He decided to go for Jelly or um, um, Celebi instead, which is pretty much the team I was predicting. Uh, the reason I say Alamola is such a big threat for me is because it is hard for me to deal with. And since he has Kieran B, I can't use Tangrove. I think he overpredicted there a little bit, and thinking that due to my Tangrove, he couldn't use Alamola. Fair enough. And my team is as follows, uh, Wakai Berry, Asumaril basically to take a, uh, of course, uh, Fusion Bolt from the Curum. And then we got Entei with Sugar Berry to be able to deal with Earthquake from, of course, the Nasty Dog Trio. And, of course, a uh, power from uh, the Curum. And Celebi, I guess. And then Culver, Jelly Sent for his Rapion, which he didn't bring. Uh, Rhyperior is Leftovers, pretty offensive actually with Stealth Rock because I need Stealth Rock with this matchup. Uh, Metagross is your standard set, base, fast enough to have speed base 100. And Latios is, uh, or Latios, is uh, Healing Wish. I do believe Draco, Shadow Ball, and uh, so I, I don't know, Recover. Alright, so anyway, with all this in mind, guys, let's go. So all I was thinking going into this game was, of course, that he's gonna lead with Medicham. Assumeril is the best lead outside of him bringing Rotom, so I'm gonna lead with Juice the Palm. Uh, which means Apple use in French for to wonder, and it brings a superpower. So I was thinking, alright, fair enough. He's gonna go for fake out, there's really nothing he can do. I am bulky enough to take that hit, I'm even bulky enough to take a follow to headbutt. So with that in mind, I decided to go for knockoff. Seeing that it's very unlikely it would stay in, since it gets hurt so much, but it goes for Drain Punch, and um, yeah, he, he, he went for Drain Punch, which is super, super risky, of course, as he could have lost it right there and then if I went for player up. Now, I'm the fool instead, I need to go to Safira, which of course is my Latios. And I don't think that Rain Punch that well. I really, really, really don't. Now, I could go for Draco, finish it off, but seeing that Dewblade is still a factor, I'm going to still go for Shadow Ball. It is still super effective damage. But knowing how Oscar is playing right now, I knew it's going to be somewhat predictable, which means that I need to make those plays myself. Now, I went for Shadow Ball there, and it did a Dewblade one third. One fourth, maybe. Anyway, that's special defensive. I'm getting the hell out of here. I was fearing pursuit, but it's, I have nothing really to worry about. So I'm gonna go to Desotroya! And Desotroya, of course, is gonna get the free rocks up. Seeing that he doesn't have a spinner or a defogger, he had Toe Kiss and Team, which actually was something I was kind of feeling too. Um, I decided right here and then to just go for the self rocks. Now, Celebi is gonna come in, and I can say like this I can't touch this guy. It's simply not possible. Now, feeling the Giga Rain. Uh, I need to do um, well, a good play, and I couldn't go to Lodios again, seeing that he could go for Shadow Ball. So Entei is the better choice, and he goes for a Grass Knot. And the reason I sound so surprised is because it does a lot of damage to Entei. It actually does a lot of damage to so being resisted and whatnot. So anyway, I was feeling like he could have her power, and if so, you know, fine, at least I'm getting kicked out. But no, he's actually going to switch out, and Sacred Fire, while I do crit here, would not kill him anyway, but Extreme Speed would, but um, yeah, pretty much that is a shitty switch in for a very, very mighty Mon. Now here it comes to Medicham back, and I was thinking, alright, he's gonna go for Fake Out. There's no reason for him not doing so, or he could go for High Jump Kick. Predicted that I, would, that I am Scarf or anything like that. So I'm gonna go to Jelly Scent, and I was thinking, alright, I can scout him if he has Thunder Punch. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't have Thunder Punch, which is awesome, because I decided here to go for a Will-O-Wisp, and the reason I say that's nice is because that means Dewblade now can't damage me enough to uh, ensure that Doug Trio can kill me with Earthquake. The reason I say that is because I know he's gonna Sword Stance on me, so I'm gonna bring in Sigma, which of course is the monster's Metagross. And like I said, due to my cult previously to this match, I knew I could take a Shadow Sneak naturally uh, and still take him out. But now, when of course he's burned, it means I can take two Shadow Sneaks or take a Sword Stance Shadow Sneak and still take the damage from Dugtree. I was fearing maybe could crit me. That would be very, very unfortunate. That doesn't happen, which means we're still in the clear. The max amount of damage that Dugtree can do to us is 115 damage. So we are clear. We are really, really, really clear. 
So I was feeling here that please, please be banded or you know something like that. Uh, or actually, I was hoping for focus sash since that would help. That uh, wouldn't do so much damage as it actually does. Uh, now, obviously, we do survive it. But here's the thing: we can't take a fake out now. Of course, we can't take it. Why? Why would we take a fake out, right? I am still sure since it hasn't bring cure uh, and yet that is it is it is in scarf, which means Metagross can sweep from here on out. So I'm gonna bring in Necromedusa, which of course being a jelly sense and. Um, you know, I, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna play around here. I'm just gonna go directly for the Shadow Ball. I see, of course, double switch out to uh, the Celebi and goes for Nasty Blood. And I was thinking, oh my shit. Oh my shit. That is not good. That is not good. And feeling that right here comes a Giga Rain, he's gonna get his health back. And I, I can't risk that. So I'm gonna sag Assumeril, which is actually the mod has the least amount of HP. And he goes for Grass Nuts. So I was thinking, damn. I mean, I could have taken that hit because Jelly Scent or Necromedusa's HP is really, or weight is really low. Uh, but anyway, you know, he went for Grass Knot, fair enough. And uh, since he has an Asplod over now, I know I can just go for Shrink Free and finish that off. And uh, his last two months now are the Cure and Black, of course. And um, I'm not feeling I want to risk it since Outrage does take me out from this range. So I'm just going to go for Extreme Speed here. And uh, maybe I should have gone for Sacred Fire because he could have gone for Earth Power too. But they have to go for Dragon Pool, so he's specially oriented completely. And I kind of felt that, alright, he's probably Scarfed. He has to be, right? So, um, unfortunately here, Entei will fall, but it's not in vain though. It's definitely not in vain. And uh, I can just bring Desol Troya back to the game. And uh, basically wrap things up. Now... Uh, Garloska said he kind of forgot about the rocks, which um, is, uh, is unfortunate, but at the same time, the game was already wrapped up at this point. But Desotroya will get two kills from, from of course, the last matchup, because Cure and Black will fall to, of course, rocks, sadly. So yeah, that's the game. Uh, now, I should say this. Uh, I got... We, of course, talked after the game, because he had actually a situation here where I do believe he would have won the game. Uh, he had Nasty Plot, Baton Pass, and his Celebi. And of course, he had Earth Power, and he was scoffed. <sighs> and I, of course, didn't have Bullet Punch for Metagross because I had Thunder Punch for the Olomola. So, with that in mind, I'm pretty sure he could have won from there on out. Now, he actually blacked out, or rather, he forgot that uh, Terra Vault does neglect, of course, Levitate on my Eladios, which, you know, that happens. I've done the same twice. <laughs> <laughs> actually, lightning rod, and I do believe uh, bolt ups or both times switched in things that just died. Splendid. Anyway, you know, stuff like that do happen. Um, and to Koloskar, I actually enjoy this game a lot. Um, he was a bit predictable in, at the get go, but at the same time, uh, I think he wanted to get a feel for what I was trying to do, and uh, I think he did that right. Like, I'm trying to like see a situation where I could have played things better, but obviously. Go play rock with a sumer watch was probably the better choice since the dublet really couldn't hurt my uh Desotroya or of course my um my right period. There was no way that thing is gonna touch me anyway. So there's no reason for me not going for play rock. And that would have meant that you know the pressure would have been there from the get-go. And yeah, just overall, like my team was very, very in-depth built for this match, but the matchup wasn't there. So I played with the power I had, and luckily for me it did pay off. But like I said, had um, had uh, Oscar, of course, made that play, things might have turned a lot differently, definitely. Uh, but with all that said, of course, I want to thank everybody for watching. It's been a great first week, and I'm looking forward to the next week, and of course, the Mount Moon Battle Association. So thank everybody for watching, and I'll see you next week. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.